so in this lecture so this is again the introduction to operating system so here we will learn about computer system organization so how is the computer organized so computer system basically it has what so one or more cpu your cpu is the central processing unit which executes your code executes your instruction so you have one or more cpus okay so they are the main workers who basically execute your instructions so cpu you can have one or more of cpus then you have device controllers okay they are also very important what are device controllers so you have seen in your computer so you attach a lot of devices to it so for example you attach your mouse to your computer your keyboard your printer your monitor okay so these are the devices your hard disk so these are the devices that you attach to your computer and because they also they have device controllers on those hardwares okay so they are connected through the common bus provided access to the shared memory okay so they are basically connect through the common bus providing access to shared memory so we have a shared memory in our computer so let's try to see that thing so we have here a memory okay so memory is shared so memory is where you write which whatever is executed whatever data you get from let's say your keyboard when you click something mouse at some particular point so all those things are noted and they give us some data so they all through a common bus okay we all are they are all connected to the memory where they can store something they can read something and so on so monitor through the graphics adapter it is connected so usb controller through that you have your mouse keyboard disk controller controls your disks hard disk how you access them cpu is connected to memory so computer system operation so what they do input output device and the cpu can execu execute concurrently now let's see this important thing so your cpu can execute your input output devices also they also have their execution so they can execute also code so because we want our computer system to be efficient what we do we allow both of them to work concurrently okay so each device controller is in charge of a particular device type so for example the monitor controller that is in control of the monitor okay each device controller has a local buffer so for example in there is a keyboard and there is a keyboard controller so this is your keyboard and there is a device controller here for your keyboard so it also has a small piece of buffer let's say your computer somehow is busy so you can keyboard can whatever is being pressed it can be stored in your buffer and when there is a chance to send this data to the main computer this can be sent but a local buffer is important cpu moves data from to main memory to from local buffers so, okay cpu what it does so it has the main memory is there okay so the memory or the ram what you call and cpu can transfer your data from main memory to your buffers okay main memory to your buffers okay of the keyboard of other devices and it can also copy from those buffers to its main memory so for example i press let's say a i o these three letters so they will be first stored might be stored in a i o will be stored in the buffer then your cpu will copy these to the from this buffer to the memory input output is from the device to local buffer of the controller okay so then what happens so this one in fact what i was saying is this one is local buffers okay so the cpu also has some buffers input output is from the device to local buffers of the controller so input output is from the device so these devices so they put it into the local buffer of the controller device controller so now let's see how it is done what i was talking about if there is a buffer here the input output device stores the key pressed in from the keyboard here now device controller it has to send it to the cpu or the main computer so what it does 
so i have to inform you let's say you are not listening to me i have to communicate somehow so here we use interrupt so all these devices they use what is known as interrupt so interrupt informs the computer or the cpu that okay some data is ready you need to copy it so this is basically being done by the interrupt so device controller informs cpu that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt so keyboard device controller when it has some data in its local buffer it will interrupt to the cpu saying that please copy whatever i have to give you so now interrupt basically is very important this is the way for communication okay so what are the common functions of interrupt so interrupt transfers control to the interrupt service routine so basically let's think that i am a person or cpu is basically a person again the human analogy so that is a person and your piece of codes are basically some tasks that needs to be done when some different kind of interrupts come so interrupt transfers the control to the interrupt service routine so these interrupt service routines are the things that you have to follow when you get some interrupt through the interrupt vector which contains the address of all the service routines so basically i am a person cpu is a person he might get different kind of interrupts okay so he can get an interrupt from a keyboard he can get an interrupt from printer he can get interrupt from a mouse okay so there many different kind of interrupts can come and then what happens the cpu has different service routines or different pieces of code that needs to be executed when particular interrupts come so what does the cpu do he will see what which interrupt is there then he will look into the interrupt vector and find which particular interrupt service routine he has to run interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction so what happens let's try to understand this word by word interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction so he will save that instructions address and then what happens when the cpu is trying to run the interrupt service routine of for some particular interrupt okay then he need to disable all other interrupt basically what will happen i am a person okay i was initially at my gate or a door listening to different people who are coming and interrupting me saying i need something but when some interrupt comes this person leaves the door he goes into the house does some work here what was needed by that particular interrupt and then returns back but in between when this person is inside the house and doing something to process that interrupt the interrupts are disabled here because otherwise if some interrupts come he will not be able to know that they have come okay so that's why it might be lost so interrupts are disabled when interrupt service routine is being done so now a trap interrupt trap is a software generated interrupt caused by either an error or a request so software generated interrupts can also come let's say i write a very bad piece of code and divide do a calculation like int a is equal to 5 by 0 this is a very bad piece of code it generates an error saying that division by 0 so that will be a trap kind of user software generated interrupt and operating system is basically interruptive and it's basically a person okay cpu he is getting a lot of interrupts and he is handling all those interrupts so he is getting one interrupt from keyboard so i am pressing some keyboards then what will happen this interrupt then he will try to write it to the monitor whatever he is getting so he will interrupt the monitor so i hope till here this is enough for the the second lecture on introduction to operating system we will look at the third lecture for introduction to operating system so thanks a lot